Hello, uh, welcome to a new video. This tutorial is on spaceship modeling. And um, in this video, we'll cover some things like matte cap shaders, how to use them to help you visualize uh, what, whatever you're modeling. Um, we'll be talking a lot about just, just 3D form in general, how to sort of get these soft shapes. Um, you know, we're gonna keep everything fairly simple. Um, uh, we'll also be learning about work planes, uh, things like that. And, um, and next week, I will be also showing how I actually made uh, this environment and this material. All of this was made inside of uh, Modo, all the space, all that. In fact, I'll post a picture right now so you guys can see it. Um, the star field, uh, everything. So I always try to basically challenge myself into into not doing anything post uh, modo, especially for these videos. Um, but the main reason is because I'm lazy and I don't want to do anything. I just want to press render. Okay, cool. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Another thing that you will notice is that I'm going to start fast forwarding these clips. Um, 3D modeling takes time. So um, I, I feel like I'll just compress the, the parts where it's more just me modeling instead of me uh, trying to show you something. Um, and then I'll slow it down once an important lesson uh, pops up. And um, another thing that we're going to start doing too is a symmetry line. And, uh, and with symmetry line, it, you know, you could basically work on both ends of the, of the car and it always, or the ship, and it always uh, sort of follows the other one. Uh, I'm sure it'll happen in this um, uh, recording. Uh, a lot of times that, that, that um, tool, the second something gets misaligned, it stops, uh, it stops working. I, I think in this version, they made it more stable, but there's ways of, to get back to that, even if, um, even if you can't figure out exactly where it got misaligned. So actually, I'm gonna get him a little closer, just to sort of see. And, and the neck, yeah. So uh, first, remember, first select your item and then go into item, item mode. So anyways, I'm just gonna right now, I'm basically just putting volumes in space. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna wanna, uh, cut it and um, I'll use my slice tool or right. yeah in my mesh edit we got slice and then we'll just slice it down the middle okay so let's let's sort of just start moving stuff around uh, one of the things that um, I noticed the most uh, when people are learning to do 3D modeling is that they do, um, they're not very disciplined in terms of the shapes they use. They start moving things everywhere uh, and don't really consider what's around it, what, how it will affect it, you know. Um, I'm very uh, hyper aware of that because um, basically if if your whole structure is making sense and talking to itself, it really starts giving a lot of um, uh, st strength to the to the model. A lot of times, people you know they want to they want to move things everywhere, and and it really um, it really uh, after a while it just looks like a a a, a Play-Doh ball. You know, you have to sort of take your time. Here, I'm going to add a loop here because I kind of want, um, I want to have a sort of like tapered top and I want in the middle to be sort of, you know, like the UFO. So then I'm going to select the top and and then I'm going to go in like, like this edge and then go in. As you can see, I don't know if you guys noticed, I have my, my grid on. I always, I try to leave it on as much as I can. And also, I want to um, sort of give a reminder that I have, I've been working as a 3D modeler for a really long time, um, you know, uh, or been 3D modeling for a really long time. So I have a very um, strong understanding of form and, you know, proportions. So, so um, just know that, that a lot of the, a lot of the reason why this model well, I hope will come out looking good. Is um, 
also based on just my life experience. So uh, in terms of, um, and then the, just the number of models I've done. So, um, you know, I know, I know uh, when I was younger, I would follow along these tutorials and my results wouldn't be anywhere close to what I saw. Uh, I'm not saying this thing is going to be any good, but um, just remember that, you know, we were all at that point and uh, and every model, you know, you learn something new and it really starts to, um, you know, you can start developing sort of a style and, and um, a lot of quality to your designs just by understanding regular form. <coughs> I really, oh yeah, that looks cool. Let's, let's move it farther back. And see, there's no real, I'm just right now just you know, looking at proportions, looking at, that's cool. Already, I think. So, um, one of the, 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 the try to keep, um, uh, let's try to keep as much, uh, um, as basic as possible in terms of the general shape of the, of the craft. Uh, if you if you notice uh, when you especially in sci-fi films, uh, they're just big giant shapes. They're just two circles connected, and and to me, you know, that's not a way of saying oh, you know, that that's the why they do. You know, they could have done this complex things that that you know rotated and did this and did that, but that's not really the point. Uh, you know, it's about it's about what type of um, message you're trying to trying to give. You know, and um, and sometimes uh, a cube is the best message. You know. Um, uh, just because you can make a super complex thing doesn't mean you have to. So oh, right now for that edge tool, I use the bevel tool. Uh, and then right now I'm just, you know, just kind of uh, seeing how, how this form is looking. Um, when you press tab, you see it does this smoothing thing. But the thing is, I know since there's so little um, geometry here, it really, I'm really not helping myself by by um, looking at the mesh smooth. Right now, I'm just looking, I want to see at the general shape, you know. I, um, okay, so uh, I went a little bit ahead and um, I was developing the scene for, for this spaceship. Uh, I have, a, I teach a class in Art Center for, for 3D modeling. And one of my students gave me a great suggestion to, to um, highlight the cursor um, that was Wayne uh, so Wayne thank you and now everybody's gonna be able to see what's going on so um, I haven't really done too much in terms of the modeling compared to the last segment you saw but um, but there's a couple concepts that that I want to teach you guys uh, to help you model and um, and again, this is a, another basic intro video, so it's gonna go by a bit slow. Um, and also, uh, I'm gonna start, you know, just, I, I usually, when I'm talking, it relaxes me if, I, if I'm just moving polygons around. You know, once I really start kind of getting into the flow, it, um, it helps me relax, kind of. So, um, the, the model will be constantly shifting around. Um, the one of the things I want to show you guys um, is working planes and also matte cap shaders. Um, uh, right now I have this reflective shader, and usually I like to leave it up here um, uh, into default. But since I kind of already did a bunch of stuff with my environment, it looks a little a little bit distracting. I kind of want to have different options of quickly shading this. So that's what basically matte cap shaders are, and um, to 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 get them first, you need to put them the image the mat caps in your scene. So um, you press F six uh, to start the to open the presets. And here in mat caps, you have all the mat caps that um, Modo has. So um, when you double click on it, wh what's happening is this image just went into the file. So yeah, you can actually find it here where it says images. So see, I just double clicked on it, and and now this file, this this um, mat cap showed up right here. Um, these were from the a uh, couple hours ago, but um, but basically right now we just kind of want to get it, get these into our scene. So um, I'll get I'll get a couple more. Let's see. Uh, this actually did a, a nice. Oh, look, it's a really chrome one. Or maybe that um, 
uh that where's that bubblegum one there's um uh there's a bubblegum one that my uh the students i help uh they loved it i loved it too bubblegum is tight i mean where's the bubblegum mm -hmm. okay this is gonna be a last chance if i don't see it it's gone forever uh, uh, i don't think it is in this one wait ah there it is that was a close one okay <clears throat> So then, um, we need to we need to assign the matcap shader to to our spaceship, right? Um, so I'm gonna select on my spaceship, and then uh, I'm gonna go to my shading, and here's my spaceship material. I'm gonna open this up. Uh, now it has a bunch of other stuff that has to do with um, with the texturing I did, but don't pay attention to this. I'll, I'll uh, in another more advanced video on materials, I'll show you how to do those really cool rendering effects. But for right now, uh, in spaceships, you click on it. Oh, well, oh, whoops, cancel, sorry. You click on it, you just select it basically. And then you go up here to add layer. And then add layer, you go to special, and then you, we have this um, matte cap shader here. And now it lets me choose what, which one I want, and I click on it. So now my, uh, my spaceship has this nice bubblegum texture to it. Um, or if I if I go back here to matte cap shader and then up here to texture layer, uh, I got the images right here, and then I could I could change this around. This is really nice, um, um, just for modeling and quickly uh, visualizing. Once you actually get down to like rendering and stuff, these things aren't aren't really good for that. But at least you know it gives you a, a nice um, starting point, or you know a, something nice to look at while you're modeling. Uh, another thing too that I um uh, I forgot to tell you guys if in the numpad if you press uh, four five six seven eight nine it changes to the different shading modes uh, which you can see up here too uh, look four five six seven eight nine um, and I usually don't the only time I use it is to quickly go to uh, the reflection mode because that that's one of the modes I like to model in uh, but most of the time I'm actually usually in default. Um, because you know that's usually where you can see your matte cap shaders. <clears throat> so um, let me see. So now, now um, uh, I'm just gonna start talking more about the modeling and also about forms uh, in general. Uh, a lot of people uh, don't have that good of understanding of of what three D form is, and um, you know, there's a lot of rules that you tend to follow. You know, um, uh, first you start by the by the basic shapes, and then you start adding the details. You know, I see a lot of people who are, are just learning. They tend to start adding um, polygons everywhere, edges everywhere, and pulling, pushing and pulling. Um, to me, that's not uh, the correct way to, to sort of model because then you uh, you don't have any structure to it. So, so try to remember to. Um, you know, for uh, just just block the shapes out, and actually with with this one, I'm gonna keep refining it. So, for example, this line right here, um, even though I do like that cut, um, I, I don't think I need it right now. So I'm just gonna delete it. And see now, now we're just getting a little more geometric, which is perfectly fine uh, for a spaceship. And then when I press Tab, you know, it everything's nice and smooth all my reflections, except here in these corners, but that has to do more with the uh, mesh smoothing algorithm. It's sort, of, it's sort of something you sort of have to live with in terms of uh, with polygon modeling. And um, and with polygon modeling, it is true, it truly is like the the less, less is more, you know, um, you don't have to add a million details and, um, and a million uh, edges to, to kind of get something you want, you know, try to use the least amount of polygons for everything. Um, and another thing I want to show you guys is uh, symmetry. Uh, so up here, when you click on it, on the symmetry X, uh, then it, it, um, it, it makes it symmetrical when you start modeling. This is really cool for, for um, uh, vehicles and spaceships, you know. Have the, now that you have the, the, the symmetry line, um, you know, it makes it easier to, to sort of start start um, manipulating the whole the whole surface and um, you know get something that's a little more avian -y. and and just because um, you know a lot of times 
there there is a, a a place and time for a lot of crazy inlets and all that um but right now I, i'm actually going to keep it uh very very simple i feel like in spaceships in general they just always tend to be very very simple <clears throat> So I'm actually I might just leave it like that and maybe put some sort of no, actually I'll I'll lower this back down. Okay, so now I kind of want to straighten a lot of these elements out. So what I'm going to do, for example, I want this UFO line to be straight now. Um, you know, the, the, the straighter and everything is to, to um, in a plane, the more planner it is, the more um, structure these things tend to have. So let me go here. And then I'm going to select this edge. Um, and, and then I'm going to scale it down. See now that I just flattened all that. Select this edge, press R to scale, and I'm gonna scale it down. So now, when I unhide it, it's it's more um. <coughs> it's more straight up, and and now now it's just going across one axis. So I'm always trying to sort of keep angles constant with themselves in terms of, for example, all these, how they, you know, if, if I, the relationship between this angle and this angle, it's, it's basically, um, I try to always keep it um, as parallel as possible just to kind of minimize any twist. If I move this, if I move this point out, you know, that, that, never, that never looks good in the end result. It starts making things look very weak. I always try to structure everything very, very um, similar to itself, basically. But obviously not, because in the in towards the edge, it's gonna flatten out. It's gonna have to twist to sort of get this shape. Now, I know that I want more, more, um, uh, basically more of an edge here, or you know, it, it's it's getting too round uh, to me. But the but I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is select this loop, and I'm gonna add a bevel. And I did this on uh, and I I sort of started building this on purpose. First, I got it to the uh, theoretical edge that I wanted, and then now I'm gonna add the bevel. So now it has a nice, well, almost like a stingray kind of look to it, huh? Mm. Another thing I want to do is I kind of like having a sort of like a flat edge here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I need to add, uh, I need to add a loop uh, here and here. So I'm gonna go into my add loop tool and I'll put one here. And just to keep everything balanced, we'll uh, let's let's make it we'll make it ten millimeters. Because I wanna add ten oh whoops, ten millimeters to the other side too. <laughs> so ten millimeters. No, I can. Okay. All right. I'm a I actually still I, I want them to be even even um even sharper. So even though the bevel was very nice already, I um I'm gonna move these around. There you go. 
Now I'm gonna actually use this as an opportunity to um, teach you guys about symmetrical planes um, and symmetrical pl uh, or not symmetrical planes. I'm sorry, um, uh, work planes. Uh, and this is um, uh, this is actually an extremely important part in uh, in three D modeling. Uh, as you can, as if you can tell, there's an S in this line, as in this. If you look at it basically from this angle, this this is kind of going in, and then and then it um it goes out again. And to me, uh, a perfect a perfect line going through this form would be straight. It looks like it's dipping down here. So I want what I want is basically a, a plane that cuts uh that that uh, is averaged around here. And with with Moto, it's actually incredibly easy and. And uh, once I found this tool, it actually um, it made me sort of um, realize how how incredible Moto is for, for these sorts of things. So uh, how you do it is first you have to first you have to take out the symmetry tool because um, uh, it th uh, the work plane is going to be based on selection, and with the symmetry tool, the other side always gets picked too. And I need I need a little more control. What I'm going to do um, now is is um, basically model half of it without the symmetry and then I'm going to flip it over because I know I want to do a bunch of sort of one-sided actions and a lot of them Moto doesn't like but um, uh, uh, with symmetry on so I'm going to have to break the symmetry and then I'm going to duplicate it so anyways um, and the easiest way to do that is first I'll take out the symmetry and um, and actually for right now I'll leave this side um, I'll leave this side um, unrefined and then, uh, and all I'm doing right now is just refining these these uh, three lines. So, okay. So uh, the work plane is up here, um, and um, when you click on this on this button, you'll see it has a bunch of options. Excuse me. Right now, we're just gonna focus on align work plane to selection, and um, and reset work plane. Uh, so so there's actually um, when when you select something like for example this this um. This polygon. If I go to work plane and align work plane to selection, it 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 aligns my my work plane to the the polygon I just picked. So now, when I look at it from the side, I you know e everything sort of oriented around this 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 polygon. And this actually becomes very powerful because it gives me the opportunity to to um, eliminate uh, any twist in a in a polygon. So I could use my scaling tool, and if I if um right now it's hard to tell, but if I go to wireframe mode, see there's a bit of a twist, and then if I scale it down like that, then it, it sort of eliminates that twist. So uh, now it's getting a, a lot cleaner, and um and and to sort of get out of this mode, uh you could either go to here work plane and reset work plane and now you're back to normal modeling or um, you could use the end uh, button and also the home button sort of uh, toggles you back and forth from from the work plane and the and the um, uh, regular plane Let's see. and then if you press shift home it it resets um, the work plane to your selection. So if I press here and press uh, shift home, now my work plane is in, in that selection. And let me turn on the um, reflections with physics. So see, this is a really easy way to start um, eliminating twist in, uh, in your polygons. I'm not gonna do it for this one because over here it's uh, it's gonna affect my bevel. So you know you always have to be uh, very alert of um, of the rest of your model. But see now that we cleaned up this edge, look how nice and clean it looks. Um, so uh, if I press end, you know I go back into regular mode. So uh, um, so one of the really the the really good ones is when you pick three points. 
So um, I could I could tell that there's basically an S curve here. Um, it's going through this this curve is going through the car, but it's Sing around here, and I want to sort of eliminate that S. So uh, an easy way to do that is first you have to or what I do is first I select them, and then I hide everything else by, by pressing Shift H. And I know right now I'm sort of just focusing on basically this edge. I want to I want to refine it. So um, uh, I'm gonna select a, a vertex mode, right? When we when you select the vertex, and how the work plane um, selection uh, uh, plane mode works. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Um, how the work plane selection works is that. Um, the first one you select would be the center of your plane, and then it sort of averages out the pl the the next two points. And then once you press Shift Home, now it gives me this uh, work plane that that cuts through the whole form. And if I go to the front view, or with the with um with the wireframe, so we can see what's going on. See, you could actually see the S scene that I was talking about. So if I select all of, if I select all of these, see, there's a this is this is too high too. Oh. And I press uh, E. Oh, whoops. I don't think this is part of my stuff. Yeah, it's not. Um, hold on, let me just double check. Okay, I didn't want to accidentally. I think I selected this one an accident. So then we press E to scale it. And then, um, so basically, what I'm doing is I'm flattening the relationship to themselves. I want to straighten this one out and I also want to make it go a little farther in so I'm going to select all of these and I'm, I'm going to use my slide tool to slide it closer and I'll slide these just a bit closer too just to sort of straighten out that edge and then I'm going to do the same thing here mm -hmm. uh, selecting these shift H and then I press 1 select here, select here, select here. Then I press uh, a work plane, a line work plane to selection, or you could press Shift H. And now I'm going to go to my right view. And I want to flatten all of these. So um, oh, first I have to select all of them. Oh, wait, they are. Oh, no, what's, I still need to select all of them. So this one's missing, and this one's missing. And then I go to my right view, and then I press R to scale them, and then I just scale them down to zero. And see, this flattens this. And then we can press N to get out of a uh, get out of um the work plane mode. So if you, it's a bit difficult to notice in such a subtle form, but um, these types of movements really, or these types of um, eliminating S curves really starts giving the whole model a much more professional look. And also sometimes, uh, for like for example, right now with all the movement, some of this alignment went off. One of the ways that I clean up models after I've moved them around too much is I'll just uh, eliminate the edge loop again, and this one and this one, and then um, and then I'll add them again, or I I will I will actually flatten that again.
because I think I uh, I accidentally I accidentally did um, move the edges around. So here I'm gonna go to zero and click on this edge and scale zero. And then on hide. Okay, now we're we're close to perfect again. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna add Actually, you know what? I'm going to actually move all of it up because last time I was actually thinking about putting more volume there. Something like that. And that would technically misalign this thing, but it's okay. about adding some edge loops here just to sort of give it more structure. Oh, well first I'm going to add these two. Or maybe I'll wait. No, I'll add them right now. Oh, another thing that I want to do is um is I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add a row here, and then I'm also. I have to duplicate on the other side to start doing s symmetrical modeling right now. Since I move all these around without any symmetry, if I turn it on again, it um, it will work, but not in not in everything, like especially the things I moved. See, but the things that haven't been affected will will still work. So uh, that, that's sort of one of the 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 um, conditions with the symmetry tool. So for uh, the first thing I'm going to do is um, actually I'm going to delete. I'm going to select this one and this one and get the loop, and I'm going to delete it. And then I can, I'm going to double click to delete this thing here. That's uh, I always do that um, when I'm modeling. I use loops to disconnect a, um, a, po a polygon set, and then I'll select the whole other polygon set. Uh, and to me, it's a bit of a shortcut. Uh, so now I'll go to duplicate mirror x-axis and then apply so now we have two perfectly um, symmetrical sides and then I'm gonna select both of these uh, oh, without the symmetry tool because I think the bridge tool is kind of weird so we go to edge bridge no oh, whoops it got it gave me way too many seconds and I actually kind of want a segment though so I want a middle line now so when you bridge you could actually make it so that it doesn't put any um, vertices there, or you could, or if you want an edge, or if you want twenty edges, you can make it happen here in segments. I only want one edge, okay? And then this, I kind of wanted it to be a little quicker. Okay, so in this clip, I sped it up about three times. And um, and I feel like in this segment it was really where I started changing the the look of my model to something much more professional. And as you can see, the the movements are very minimal. Uh, the bi the big volume changes those happen in the beginning of the of the modeling stage. Now this to me is just refinement. Uh, looking at how the polygons are lined up next to each other, how their angles are. You know, if I could add more volume or more more curvature to some to some um, of the main volumes and how they're speaking to themselves. Like that's the goal in, in this part of the, or this portion of the modeling process. It's like the refinement. And that's a, the beauty about polygon modeling is that you could just push and pull and slowly craft this shape. And um, it's to me, it's very almost therapeutic. Uh, I, I like doing it. And I'm always you know looking at the general volumes of the whole shape, you know, making sure that they talk to each other. Here I noticed that the bottom seemed a bit weak to me compared to the top. So um, so I start adding a little more belly to it. You know, change, change things up, make them add a little speed, add a little, uh, a little more width, you know, make it relate more with the top. Uh, very subtle things. But um, this really changes the whole look of, of my 3D model.
now it, now to me it, it comes out a lot more beautiful okay so now um we're gonna keep this project relatively simple so i'm not gonna do too much more um i am gonna do a little just to add some more volume i'm gonna cut uh volume here i'm gonna cut slice my mesh here and i'm also going to do some cleaning up here so first i'm going to slice the the mesh so from the top or mesh edit slice snapping and then and then just move it out a little bit and also these i'm going to i'm going to move them out i feel like they're a little too a little too pointy. And um, as you can see, I'm being very uh, slow with my movements. Uh, I don't really, I, I try to keep it as minimal as possible with all the change. And um, the last thing I'm gonna do is I, I wanna add some more curvature here. And as you can see, this plane is actually quite twisted. It happens on the end of two, but here I might as well take the opportunity to sort of fix that. Oh, let me shift on height. So how you do that is first I'm going to delete this one and, and this one. And then I'm going to add a loop here. Like that. And then I'm going to select this edge and this edge and bridge them. And this edge and this edge and bridge them. And then here, I actually have uh, uh, just three, three, I have uh, three sides, so I can't actually bridge that. So how I'm gonna fill that in is with uh, a pen tool. So if you go to here to polygon and pen tool, and as you can see, when you get close to a vertices, it, um, it, like, it turns blue, you click on it, click on it, and you click on, oh, whoops. Now it looks like I accidentally I might have done something in accident. Let me see. Oh man. Okay, I'll try that again. There you go. And I'll get this bottom one here. And actually, it got it got assigned the default of um, not bubblegum shader, so I gotta put it back to bubblegum. There we go. And now I actually have this point here to sort of move around. Um, after this uh, clip, basically the only thing I'm doing is refining uh, the final the final um, touches before I know that I'm gonna subdivide it and add more details uh, because right now with such a low poly cage it's hard to start adding like a canopy without affecting too much of it so i know that after this point i'm gonna i'm gonna stop being able to move these big volumes around so i'm just doing some last minute refinement and then after that uh, we're gonna sub d it and add the add the canopy and in terms of the modeling that's basically it for for this spaceship and then I um, I subdivide it. So now I have more options, and I'm gonna grab all these. I'm gonna grab from here too. Basically, now I'm sort of selecting the canopy, which is very human concept. You know, spaceships, they don't need canopies, but 
right now sort of I, I'm just trying to show you guys uh, different techniques and um, what I'm gonna do is actually bevel this so we're gonna go to polygon bevel and then we're gonna see how it looks but for actually what I'm gonna do first is um is um I want to see it without the without the mesh smooth, and then okay. So now I'm gonna bevel it. I'm gonna get close. And with beveling, you see these handles. That's like your tool handle here, and also if they're too small, if you press the plus sign, they get bigger. Or the minus sign next to your uh, next to the backspace. So I want it to go in. Okay, and then um, you see if I if I just mesh smooth it like that, you can see that there's something there. But I actually want to disconnect it, so I'm gonna get that same selection again. I'm going to control copy, delete it, and then control paste. So now it's actually its own thing. And then I'm going to double click here and press M. We'll call this glass. Oh, whoops. So this concludes the the basic modeling uh, portion of the spaceship. Uh, after those videos, I uh, I kept refining it a bit, and then I also did this cool parametric looking um, effect. I will I'll uh, release videos to show you how to get that. And next week, I'm actually going to release a video on the on the materials and the environment that I made here in this in this file it's all it's all coming internally from Modo Modo has an incredibly powerful render engine and it has so many different um, tools and and shading techniques to to at your disposal that you could really make some very beautiful abstract renderings right off the bat so um, make sure to follow me on LinkedIn or on Twitter or check back on my website uh, and I'll, every time I release a video, I'll try to tell the people. So um, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it could be a bit long, um, but I'm trying to educate people a lot on the form and, and you know, there's very, the level of, of um, skill set that, that people are watching, it's, it's a very, uh, it could range. So I, I try to be extra careful and explain as much as I can without making these videos five hours long. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I, if you guys actually do make a spaceship, uh, feel free to email me and show me. And, um, and stay tuned for, for the next video. I think you guys are really going to like it. Um, all right. Have a nice week.